Well, it's time to have something to look forward to. Stick around. Hi everybody, it's Mark, the family woodworker here. Are you tired of being stuck at home with places to go but you can't? And having nothing to do but you should? Well, I'm here to tell you that you need something to look forward to. Like maybe the ability to walk around on some fresh cut grass, playing golf with a brand new custom made rare wood putter that you made in your own workshop. So for about the cost of a roll of toilet paper, I paid $39.95 for this one. You can buy all the materials that you need in order to make a custom made, personalized rare wood putter. Babinga! So let's get to it. So here's three prototypes I built last year. On the left, I used some tiger wood. In the middle is some ipe. And my favorite on the right was built with some wenge, African hardwood. Now this is a piece of babinga. It's very heavy, it's very high up there in the Janka Hardness Index, and it's got a great pink to reddish color with some brown grain lines in it. I think this is going to make for another great putter head. So my overall block size is going to wind up being 5 inches by 3 inches, but I started with a 5 inch square block. And you can't really trust the edges here when you get it from the lumber yard, so I'm just going to make sure that I've got 90 degree cuts on all four sides. And then we're going to cut the overall shape down to five by three inches here. The other thing I wanted to show you is that this is a very heavy hardwood. So this block is 450 grams or about 15 ounces, but we're going to be shaping it and cutting it down. So we'll lose some of that weight. I also went to look for items in my shop that gave me a nice arc because I'm, I'm looking to make a mallet design putter out of this. And so I've got this big tomato sauce can which has a pretty nice arc to it. Hey, you know, you gotta look around the shop for stuff that you don't have to buy. But I also found this oversized roll of tape uh, which seemed to have a better arc and I think that's the one I'm gonna stick with. Now I also want to put a sight line on the top of the putter head. So I'm going to mix up some yellow heart hardwood with some purple heart hardwood to build my sight line. And I think the colors contrast and look really nice. So just cutting a couple of small strips, I'm going to sandwich these together. But before I do that, a lot of these hardwoods are pretty oily. And so as a precaution, I always like to take some acetone and wipe them down and make sure there's no oily residue. And it looks like there was a little bit here. Once you remove that though, you're pretty well guaranteed that the glue is gonna stick. So nothing too fancy and precise here. You're just looking for a sandwich because you're effectively going to trim it all later. Now I don't need a very thick piece because I'm going to be cutting a channel into the top of that putter head and then I'm going to wedge the small piece down in that channel. Looks pretty good just like that. And that'll go right down the center. Now the other thing, I'm going to put a link in the comments section for a video I posted last year and I'll show you how to make this jig and the definition of toe flow. Now I'm going to choose a medium toe flow position like I did for my wenge putter because I really like the way that that feels. So measuring it out, I'm going to go ahead and drill this hole on the jig with everything clamped up and that'll give me a nice straight hole for my shaft. So the shaft will be square to the face and it's at 70 degrees, which is a USGA guideline. Now I'm gonna measure out where the center is gonna be for this sight line material. And I'm gonna reduce my blade height so that I'm just carving a little tiny channel in the top of that putter head. And by using the mini sled, I'm absolutely sure I'm cutting this at 90 degrees. It'll be straight across the top of the putter head.
almost there. Taking little nibbles off the left and the right side of that center line and finally got it to fit. That'll glue up really nice. Now when you're using a saw blade, you know it's not perfect, so just a little bit of cleanup, get it nice and smooth, and it'll glue up very well. So I love my little Japanese flimsy flush cut saw, but it makes a nice straight cut without damaging the face of the wood. Now the other thing that you need to do, most professional putters like the Scotty Camerons, it's one of my favorite putters to refer to when I'm, I'm looking at putter design, is that they have a three and a half degree loft on the face. So your shaft angle is at 70 degrees and your face on the putter head should be at three and a half degrees of loft. And that little tear out chunks that oh you see God. there are gonna get trimmed out because the block is too thick. So I cut this down to an overall thickness of an inch and a half. Now it's still pretty rough and rugged here, but look at how much weight we lost. So I'm gonna have to drill some holes on the perimeter of the head and add some lead weight in. And believe it or not, friends, <laughs> these are just lead sinkers that I got at the fishing department at the local sporting goods store. So in order to get the weight back, I'm gonna to have to drill two holes on both the left and right side of the putter head. So you just measure them out and make sure that they're centered. And now that you've got the basic construction done, you can go and do some shaping like the sole of the putter is not flat. It's rounded if you take a look at uh, any putter really. So I'm not done finish sanding this yet, but one of the things I really like when I prototyped using exotic hardwoods the first time is that it's got a softer feel. So instead of hitting it on the face like solid brass or solid aluminum would feel, this has actually got a little bit of a softer hit to it. And I'm going to demonstrate that when I hit these golf balls. Hopefully you can pick up on the sound. And compare that to hitting it with a metal sound, it's completely different. And so that softer sound leads to a softer feel. And this is a very dense hardwood, so even with my other putters, for as much as I've used them, nothing damages the face of this hardwood. Uh, so, you know, I, I trust that it's going to work out really well. So now with some finished sanding down to 400, it'll be ready for finish. Now before I do that though, I want to go ahead and add the weight and the epoxy filler. Now I'm using a trick that I, I found last year by using some plumber's putty, which is an oil base, to build up some dams around the hole so that I can fill both holes at the same time. And so I'll mix up some epoxy and I've got some gold colorant here. We'll drop in the weights. and then we'll add the epoxy to fill it up. And I wanna overfill the hole so that I can cut it off flush with the putter. And I had to wait about an hour for this to firm up to do the other side. And then you have to clean up the plumber's putty after it's dry, which is a little messy because it is an oil base. We'll get the bulk of this excess epoxy cut out and then we're gonna to have to use some acetone or mineral spirits would work too to get this oil-based crud off the face of the putter. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to finish it. Acetone works really well. In fact, I had to use a toothbrush on here too.
And now we'll get the shaft glued in. Now this is a 5 8 inch hickory shaft. And if you know about the old days of golf, most every golf club was made with a hickory shaft. So this is kind of old timey and old school, but it's got a great feel. I'm telling you, I used this last year on my Wenge putter. And I like the idea of some gloss urethane. I used a, a matte finish on the Wenge putter. It doesn't really have that much shine to it, but I really like the way this Babinga just shines. It's got great wood grain. It's a heavy hardwood. And that gold tone rounds it out. Well, thank you, Jimmy. And yes, here we are at the fabled 18th green where the newest member of the tour, T Family Woodworker, lines up for a tester of a 15-footer. Well, right you are, Bobby, and he's had a great round using the most unorthodox of putters, averaging less than two putts per green through the last 70 holes. It does look like that heel and toe-weighted Babinga putter has performed very well for him throughout this tournament. I and the others on the tour have registered complaints. It looks like it does actually comply to USGA rules and design specifications. Oh, and here he's lining up for the putt to win the tournament. Here, speed will be the key. It's on its way. Looks like good pace. What an amazing putt to finish the tournament. Well done. Just, just amazing. Truly hats off to the young man with the goofy pants. Handling a difficult clown mouth hole with ease. And so here's the overall specifications. The head was essentially five by three by one and a half high. And I got it to about 12 and a half ounces or, or just over 350 grams, which is pretty standard for putters. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this week's video. And as always, if you like our content, we hope you give us a thumbs up you subscribe to the channel, and if you hit the bell icon, you get notified every time we publish something new. Take care.